the privilege of addressing this illustrious group. Special thanks to my supportive wife, Samantha, and my sister, Charlene. Would you mind raising your hands for a moment? I couldn't miss an opportunity to embarrass them, so thank you. And also special thanks to, to Jonathan, who's been very supportive on this journey of, of bringing uh, telehealth to the forefront. Thank you, Jonathan. Most conversations about healthcare recently focus on what's wrong. The rising costs, the shortages, shortage, shortages of healthcare providers, the bureaucracy, and just about anything you can imagine. While far from perfect, healthcare has done many things well, thank you very much. Great progress has been made on a multitude of fronts. For example, errat the eradication of certain diseases, the development of minim minimally invasive procedures, the extending of lifespans. People are living longer today and more comfortable lives than any time in the past. In the, in the past. As, as our population grows and with the ever-changing regulatory environments, telehealth will be at the core of the delivery of care. Telehealth provides advanced connections at a distance for patient engagements. Telehealth includes both preventative and curative. And the reason why I bring this up because there's a lot of different words that are used interchangeably. Telemedicine mainly provides the curative aspects of the medical interaction. According to a new report by the IHS, telehealth devices and services accounted for $440 million globally in revenue in 2013. This will swell to over $4.5 billion in 2018. In 2013, 350,000 different unique patient interactions took place via telemedicine. In 2018, 7 million different unique telemedicine interactions will take place. This does not include certain niches. One niche we believe that telehealth solutions will be on airplanes around the world. Last year in the US, there were over 3,200 medical diversions. A great many of these medical diversions could have been avoided if someone could have virtually uh, triaged a patient in the air. Also, I want to mention something that I mentioned at the dinner. Our company, HealthNet Connect, is working on a humanitarian effort called Pietas, where we'd be able to provide access to care to people in the most remote and rural areas around the world. We would be able to provide access to care in places that don't have power and don't have electricity by connecting a solar panel, which would power our, our virtual care technology and also connecting it to satellites. So that's an area we believe uh, passionately in providing care and access to folks around the world. There will be several challenges to adoption of telehealth. One challenge is a lack of reimbursement mechanisms. Another challenge will be poor implementation. And a third will be lack of physician support. Recent studies, however, are showing great promise despite these challenges. Studies are showing decrease in readmissions, decrease in mortality rates, and increase in patient compliance. One of the quintessential examples of this is the VA in the Care Coordination Department where they have documented tremendous success. A 25% reduction in bed days of care and a 19% reduction in readmissions. And there are many other examples that we could discuss, but when used properly, telehealth, without a doubt, has tremendous value. Despite the incredible technological and clinical possibilities, regulatory and reimbursement barriers exist. Here in the US, in 21 states, have laws that require telemedicine to reimburse uh, for, for virtual visits. 44 states have Medicaid programs to reimburse for some form of telemedicine. But the reimbursement mechanisms vary across the board and there's tremendous confusion. This is one, one thing that needs to be addressed. In addition, there are many legal challenges. Physician licensing here in the US, malpractice liability, online prescript, prescript, uh, prescribing, informed consent, 
and credentialing and privileges. All of these issues will need to be addressed. However, my friends, I've never been more optimistic about the opportunity with telehealth. And there are two big forces that will help to transcend these challenges and drive the necessary changes. First and foremost, patients want this. In recent surveys, over 70% of the population has said that they would be willing to replace part or all of their interaction with providers virtually. Moreover, the private sector wants the access and convenience of, of telehealth. 40% of the population in the US are under some sort of self-insured plan. Most people, when you discuss telehealth and telemedicine, they're focused on Medicaid and Medicare, but a huge population is, is self-insured. With, with individuals that are advocating for this, with private companies and, and, pro, and organizations like the folks here in this room today, we can and will need to drive the changes to, to promote adoption. There is also a staggering array of diverse activity in the telehealth arena. For example, there's remote monitoring, which covers the home and disease management. There's video telemedicine, which, which uh, addresses video diagnostic consultations. There's mHealth, which covers the apps. There's also the healthcare IT portion, which covers the electronic health records and the health information exchange. As the market continues to mature, these different aspects will merge together under a connected living environment. As all of this advancement is brought together, there will be several indirect revenue opportunities in the marketplace. <coughs> First will be the IT infrastructure. Interoperability <coughs> is a big ch challenge in any healthcare system. Healthcare systems tend to be very fragmented, and interfacing and integrating the different facets of healthcare will be an important part, and there will be significant revenue opportunities. Moreover, mHealth applications will play an integral role. Personalizing these telehealth applications will be a, a significant driver towards adoption. Steve Jobs' genius in developing the iPod wasn't the actual MP3 technology. The MP3 technology was out there. The folks that are going to drive the adoption aren't going to be the folks that necessarily have the best technology out there. It will be the folks that make the process easiest to use. Steve Jobs with the iPod, all you had to do is press an icon and download your music and you were listening to it. And the, the simpler and the more integrated telehealth and telemedicine solutions are, the quicker adoption will develop. Telehealth will continue to drive healthcare to new levels of proficiency and performance. Roger Van On said, it's easy to come up with new ideas. The hard part is letting go of what worked two years ago and will soon be out of date. My friends, therein lies the challenge and the opportunity with telehealth. Thank you.